Hello, hello everyone, Ted Simpson here, certified Bob Ross instructor, uh, killing my knees here, squatting down, and this is a, this is a very special day today. Uh, as you may have noticed, uh, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you might see now that I'm a YouTube partner and I've got uh, ads and monetization um, turned on. I'm super excited. I never thought I would get enough watch hours and enough subscribers to be able to possibly make a buck or two off of uh, ad revenue. Um, it's certainly welcome, and I really appreciate you guys uh, watching as much as you do. And to do the, to celebrate that, I'm gonna do what I do: paint a great little painting here, um, 12 by 16 canvas, and. If you've ever watched any of my live videos or any of my, well, any of my other recorded videos, you know that I revel in trying something brand new right on the canvas here. I'm going to be doing a painting I've never done, and I'm super, super excited to give it a try. And I'll, uh, if, I, if I was live, I'd have you guys remind me, but I'm going to try to remind myself to show you the inspiration for this one. Um, being a certified instructor here, I'm always looking for something new and expanding and refining my skills. So that's what this painting is here uh, to do today. Boy, I'm just rambling on, aren't I? I'm a little scared, that's why. So, already covered with a thin, even coat of the liquid white. And look at this palette here today. Titanium white, a little Prussian blue. I don't even know if I'm going to need that. Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, and Sap Green. And then all the highlights. Cad Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, and Bright Red. And that's what we're going to do right off the bat here. A little bit of the Bright Red, a little bit of Yellow Ochre, Bright Red, Yellow Ochre, a little bit of the Cad Yellow. What is that going to make? Kind of a kind of a peachy color. See that? Tap that around there. You want a little more yellow in yours? A little bit. Oh, maybe a little Indian yellow. A little yellow ochre, bright red. Let's just see what happens. A little bit of color in the brush. And look at that beautiful tone. I love that. This is a super warm sky here today. Simple crisscross strokes. working my way down how far how far do you think approximately halfway doesn't really matter now look at that how my brush is basically out of color so then I just start working my way right back up keeping it lighter in the middle and a little bolder up near the top softening and blending as I go Hopefully keeping it a little bolder at the top and lighter at the bottom. Now, I'm going to come in here. I want mine a little bolder. I'm, I'm just like that today. So I'm going to come up here and drop some color in, in the top again. Work my way down. Let's get a little bit more up here. I know Bob just, he just did this once. But I really like this color and I'm just going to work it. What a lovely color. I'm telling you, I'm feeling it here today. Look at that, a little bolder in the corners there. I keep dawdling, I keep, I keep futzing and fitzing around. I'm scared, I'm telling you, I've never done this one before. So, Let's go ahead and clean out my brush here. Just taking off some of the excess paint. Then let's just get the rest. Just soften it all the way across. Look at that beautiful smooth color. I'm using a, uh, a Bob Ross canvas here today uh, rather than my normal student grade canvases. These suckers are the best. I'm telling you, there's, there's nothing better than this super 
firm. It's almost like tapping a drum here. So, well, to start the next bit here, we need to make up a big batch. And here I go again. Put out probably way too much color. So I'm taking equal parts of the crimson and green. Alizarin crimson and the sap green. And we're going to make our Christmas brown. Green and red make brown. That's an Audrey Golden expression, as Bob explained in this episode. Equal parts. You can go a little bit to the red side or the green side. It looks fine. I think, I think we're a little bit to the red side. And if you're unsure, I take a little bit of white, rub it into there. That is a nice brown. Look at that. Done in one. No adjustments necessary. So let's get rid of that test pile there. And let's see what we do. Tapping a little bit of paint into the brush. See that? That's about where the paint is up here on the top. Let's see if I can get this uh, macro version here so I can show you the brush. Up here when I'm holding the brush vertical, uh, I'm just tapping. Just, just making a basic shape here. A little bit of color, building my way up. I'm really focused on this outer edge. So it looks interesting to you. Leave it alone. Now look at this. The lighter it is, the further away it's going to look. And you can make all sorts of far away ones. Come back with a little bit more color. And we can create layers here. Layer upon layer upon layer. Maybe this one here, we gotta have some more over on this side here. So stop when it looks interesting. Creating one little section. Then I overlap with a little bit of color, leaving some of these little misty things happening. Working my way down, well, to wherever you want, really. Like, like always, you do what you like. If it looks good to you, move on. As I'm working my way forward in the scene, I'm using just a little bit more of the same color, and we start to get layers. Lightest in the back, darker as we come forward. See this? Watch this. Just a little one right there. Boom! New layer. Trees after trees after trees. That's it. Now, I'm just going to clean out my brush here. A little bit of odorless paint thinner. Where's my beater bucket? There we go. Oh, it's going to turn to the side here. There we go. Clean out all the excess paint thinner. Speaking of paint thinner, I'm going to go in here with my liner brush, thin down some of that brown color, roll in that brush. Now, the less paint you have in your brush or the lighter the color, again, it's going to make it look a little further away. So maybe back here we can put in some little indications of branches, trunks, dead sticks and twigs. And we're just looking for it for for just looking for indications here. Some of these are going to get covered up. But we can pick out some tree shapes here. These will be <clears throat> 
uh, you know, right in the middle of each of these tree sections here, and we'll know kind of where to put our canopy. Now this paint thinner evaporates quickly. So I just load a little bit more thinner, remake my pile. And I think right when I'm just about out of paint, that's the perfect spot to put some back here in those far, far away ones. The ones that are closer, a little bit darker color. Ooh, there's a dark one. Almost had too much paint in my brush there. Boy, you could just spend forever doing this. It's good practice using a light, light touch. Rinse your brush when you're done with it. All right, I'm gonna come back to that one inch brush here and let's make some some highlights on here. A little bit of the yellows. <coughs> Excuse me. Bob tapped into just about everything here. And let's pick out little spots there. You know what? That's just like Bob did here. He tapped it into the sky there and he says, oh, let's get a little brighter. There, now it kind of stands out, that far away one. A little more paint in the brush or a little bit darker. And it stands out. You get a nice little little shape going here. A little bit more of the bright red. Change the color here and look at that. Just the lightest amount of green. Maybe this one here isn't quite turned yet. But the one in front of it is. You get to pick out, you get to decide which ones are caught the freeze. And then the tree just says, we're done. We're done. We cut off all the water supply. That causes those leaves to die until until spring. Maybe a little touch of red on that one. Creating lots and lots of layers. And if you mix it up a little bit and we have different colors on different parts, it just adds a lot more interest into your scene here. And you'll notice that I'm working my way forward, picking out these little spots here, letting some of those branches stay some of those trunks remain. So now that I've got that basically highlighted, just going to clean that brush once again and we move on. This is a super fast one here. If I make this into a, uh, a class painting, be very very simple perfect for a beginner so far so what do we need to do we need to build our way forward don't we let me get rid of this color before it drips onto my shoe how do I know it will drip onto my shoe could it have happened before you betcha so I scrape up the excess, wipe it with a paper towel. There we go. So let us take a little bit of the Van Dyke brown, maybe some dark sienna, and a little bit of black. That's it. Doesn't need to be 
thoroughly mix because just bashing it onto the brush will mix the color. And we're going to work our way into some more of the extreme foreground using that same concept here of darker and just a little bit more paint on the brush. Creates a whole new plane here. Now, what I'm doing here, just hitting, holding the brush vertical, but down here I turn the brush a quarter turn and I can make it a little flatter. Uh, different angles here will allow you to put a little more, a little less paint. And there we go. A little bit more paint in the brush. And let's take our brush, pull down, press in, pull down, press in, pull down. And we're going to give a whole indication of water just by making reflections. No paint in the water, unless you want to. You could make this blue or blue-green or whatever swampy colors you want. We're just doing it right here with the browns and blacks. So you want to strengthen one of it, just push a little bit more color in. There we go. Now, I wipe the excess paint out of my brush, then I can soften it just by gently pulling down, then go across. Ooh. I sometimes call this my hula move. And you don't want to take your brush and do this, raking back and forth with your wrist. Let that brush travel one angle and you can create a nice softening effect. There we go. Now, using some of that same color, a little bit of the brown and black, maybe even a, just a speck of blue. I put it out there for some reason. What was I thinking? Cut off a little roll, and let's just, just saw in a little bit. Oh. Just a little bit more. Almost ran out of paint there. Create a little bit of, of uh, beach sand. It's really not a beach, not a seascape here, but you know, some really nice flat looking edge to our water. Sort of rubbing the knife there. Before I do too much else, just a little bit of that color on the fan brush. Just lift. all this low-lying stuff. Maybe you can grab just a little bit of the top edge of that earth and just lifting up. Going to create hundreds and hundreds of little grassy things, sticky things, bushy things. There we go. And if you're like me and you accidentally grabbed a little too much, you just, just rub a little bit more there. There it is. Now, if I take a little bit of the white and black, oop, I might have gone a little too crazy there. There we go. Very small roll, and I'm just going to gently hit it, let it just, just barely graze over some of that dark. Remember how we do the shadows? Then the highlights, so let's highlight a little of that earth here and there, there and here. As long as you can see a little bit of it, that should be good. Now just a little straight liquid white, touch of the titanium white, touch of the Prussian blue. Oh, you see, we did need some. Doesn't take much though. Don't be like me and waste 50 cents worth of paint if you don't need it. And I'm gonna find those high those spots that are furthest away, those are the ones that are highest. Just touch and saw. Hmm. 
you don't need the blue in there if you don't want it. You just want it white, leave it white. If it's a little too bright, just rub and watch it just disappear. We're not looking for giant streaks here. What I like to tell my students is think fishing line, think thread. That's the diameter or the size of the marks here. There it is. There it is. Look at that. Half the painting done. Okay. Oh boy, I gotta psych myself up for this. Alright, so we've got our covered bridge. I think I'm going to be using both the, the large and the small knife here. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, postpone the inevitable here. Let me do a little bit of cleanup of this. This is a fast painting. I've only used like two paper towels. That's a shockingly small amount. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is sort of lay this shape out. It's basically just a cabin with a bigger door. I believe that's how Bob described it. Let's see how we do here. Using this little roll of paint, let's find a nice angle here. Where, oh, where is this bridge going to be? Somewhere about like that. Something along those lines. Get it? Lines? Somewhere along those lines? Okay. Now, this one here, he really wants to give an indication that this, that this bridge is long. So I make my little roof line. And then the bottom roof line is a little bit angled up. And then we connect them. You see that? It's kind of like... I always tell my students when we're making this roof line, it's almost like a parallelogram, but this one here is a little pinched in at the back, so it's more of a, some kind of rhombus. <laughs> and then I will just take this, this knife and just gently, just gently fill it in. As long as we got some dark color there, you'll see what we're going to do. Okay, let's take a little bit more of the brown, maybe some dark sienna, pull that in there, get our little roll of paint, and let's make this right on, right on down there. Okay. Always, always nerve-wracking just, just trying to figure out the line here. Something like that. Start to see that bridge. Oh, uh, let's see here, maybe just a little longer. We can always do our, our bridgectomy. <laughs> and let's see, maybe let's have a little bit more of an eve. I probably should have done that first. A little more of an eve there. Now when I do that, it looks like my roof needs to be just a little bigger as well. That's easy enough, just to make it a little bigger. Okay. So there is a basic shape. And let's just go ahead and scrape off this here. Okay. 
Now, that makes it a little easier for us to lay in our, our shadows here, blocking in our, our darks. Not having a, a great deal of paint on my knife, as you can see, you're, you can kind of see through this this dark color a little bit. You know, it's not, I'm not slathered on like like cream cheese or anything. Just making sure it's it's relatively dark. There we go. Same thing here with the side. Pulling it down. What I find here, it tends to look the best the least number of strokes you do it. <laughs> the more you go over it, the, the chances of something going going awry increase in, in my in my experience. Okay, let's mix up our highlight color. I'm gonna do it right here. Some white, maybe not that much white. There we go. Maybe a little more. Some white. Maybe a little more. Now, some dark sienna. A little touch of the red. Maybe a touch of the dark brown. Let's see what that does. There we go. We can always adjust the color. Looking for something kind of marbly. Kind of streaky. Let's see how that works. Okay, cut off a little roll of paint. And this time here, we're just going to just do a little touch and pull. Touch and pull, touch and pull, touch and pull. Big slats. And you can see here how we leave a little gap of brown, the dark brown in there. That's what gives the impression when we're done here of the spaces between these old boards. Not worrying too much about it. Some of these are a little bigger and I, I, the spaces are a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to fill some of those in. Not worried too much about it because we're taking a lot of this away. A little bit of white and gray here. And let's just dance a little bit of... dark gray shingle look here. There we go. Maybe I missed a little bit of spot in the front. Right along the front edge. Let's just Is. Now the back side of the bridge here, it's a little bit darker, maybe. Let's see if this is going to be dark enough. Nope, looks like the same color. Uh, some more slats. I have just been racking my brain. This, sound, this seems so familiar to me, but I really don't think I've done a covered bridge before. I've done barns with this slat style, but I don't think I've done the bridge. So with a clean knife here, I'm just gently, oh so gently, I just 
drift down here. Let it kind of melt and merge a little bit. Good. Same thing with this side here, just softening it a little bit. Now, with a tiny roll of the Van Dyke Brown, let's sort of bring those slats out a little bit more. Same thing on this side. A little bit darker here and there. Really gives that old airy look to the boards. Airy meaning that the boards are, are kind of rotting on the edges. Okay. A little bit more. Oh, I think I missed my little gray spot here. I need a little roll of the gray. Let's get a little up on this edge here. Touch. Touch, touch, there it is. Okay, so with some brown, a nice roll of brown here, let us make our opening. Now, you may be tempted to do this multiple times like me here, just cleaning up that edge. What we really want is just a nice smooth pull to it. And then, leave it alone. <laughs> so, are we here, are we just about ready to do our, our very rare bridgeectomy? Good. Now, let's see here, maybe Bob puts a little bit of this dark brown here or over on that side. A little bit of a little stone or maybe a little rock, a dirt pile or something. Just sort of working its way on the opposite edge here. And he might have used the liner brush. I'm just going to use the side of the knife here to give a couple of, couple of rails railings. A little bit of a cross post. There it is. A new paper towel. And maybe just a little bit of highlight on that, that rock. I don't know, just something there. Now one thing, I'll put in this little bit of a extra little bright spot right there. Ooh, I really like that. That's cool. There, I like that. It's to feeling good here. You want to go over it a number of times and put all this different stuff in here. Lots and lots of details, as much as you like. And you can. Now I'm just going to take some of this and just, just pull that down and right into the right into the water there. Some of it's going to go away. The rest of it will be part of the reflection. There it is. Now, with a little bit of a lighter color than the dark brown itself, let's just see here. That looks good. I'm going to switch over 
guess I didn't need the small knife until now. But I just want to give a little indication of this little flat bit of roadway, so to speak. Something like that. And we've got our Christmas brown here. Just gonna tap it in. Lots of uh, open space down here. It doesn't take very long to drop this in. Think about the lay of the land. You could probably wipe it in there, but the more you do that, the more it picks up the liquid white and it does get lighter on you. So I'm just gonna stick with dark by tapping. Keep it dark by tapping. Oh, my bridgeectomy is looking a little, gives that bridge a little bit of a angle to it. There we go. Alrighty, clean that brush off. Let's see what we can do here. go on I'm gonna take a little bit of the dark brown maybe with a touch of the black in it don't matter cut off a roll and let's give our let's give our road a little bit more definition going to look better perspective wise here if we have the road be wider here at the bottom just like spreading spreading the drywall paste or something like that here getting this dark stuff on and then our highlight colors a bit of white a bit of the, the black Let's do that kind of a grayish brown here and just a hint of that Prussian blue. There we go. Cut off a little roll and let's just let it skim. And I didn't think that was bright enough here, so. I added a little white, and we're just going to let it skim again. There it is. A little more paint on the knife, and it comes off a little stronger. There we go. A little bit more. Oh, just a little bit more. And then a final highlight of just a, a lighter, even still, just a little bit of pure white put into the mix. Just in a spot or two. There it is. Look at that. Okay, highlights. I'm gonna use a little bit of the liquid white, some of the yellows. 
Watch this here. A little bit of a black and blue. Ooh, not as much black. Let's use a little bit more blue. I want to create kind of a dull green. Working that into the brush. Plenty of color. And then tap. Get that little ridge of paint building up there. Let's come in and start creating the lay of the land. See here as you run out of paint, it automatically starts to get duller. This one here. If I throw a little bit more of the yellow and green in it, in it this time, change the color as we're moving forward, creating different planes. And I'm already halfway done with this section here. And as I'm loading this paint, it, I'm mixing up a little bit of the brown with it. I'm picking up brown with my brush and I go back in here to reload, I'm mixing it and it's getting duller and darker as I move forward. See, it does this automatically. Don't even have to think about it. Just keep moving forward, adding in these layers. And if you want to change the color, just grab some color and mix it in. Change the flavor a little bit. Don't think about it too much. Let the brush tap 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 a -roo. build your way forward now over on this side we're gonna do the same thing get some of that paint in the brush sneak it over with the corner of the brush that's a pretty tight spot there so just change the angle a little bit that way you're not making a giant one inch tap and it's the same concept here of Working from back to front. Create planes and layers and all these perspective tricks here work together to form the foreground. Working light against dark, dark against light. happens quickly. Now, one thing I like to do here is I'll take a little bit more of the liquid white and that color, thinning it down and it's definitely lighter. You can do this with a little bit of the titanium white and your thin paint, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's a little lighter, just a touch thinner, Get it right up on the tips of the bristles and where are some, some final little bright spots here. Pick those out here and there. Add some final interest to your scene here. A little bit more of the white. Oh, there it goes. Here and there. Kind of light, just kind of zinging right on a few of these. Same thing on this side. Oh, there it is. Pretty nice. Just cleaning my brush off a little bit here. Now, what I wanted to do, let's, let's juice this up a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of this brown, a little bit of this other brown, doesn't really matter. Maybe some dark sienna, maybe a touch of blue. Just some dark color here. And let's just, coming in with the brush handle over, a little bit up. Uh, maybe create a couple of bushy things here. 
little tall one. It kind of trails off here. Just some some growth here. As much or as little as you want. Maybe a little on this side. Knock some excess paint off the brush. Not, not as much as I wanted there. There we go, a little bit more. And I'm going to come in here and I'm not really going to highlight this too much. It's kind of just be kind of dull. Little stuff here. Here and there. Not too much. There it is. I'm going to clean that brush out a little bit more again. Now if I come back with a little bit of that grass color, I can kind of clean up the edge a little bit just by tapping a little bit. Same concept as the one inch brush. Just tapping in a little color, clean it up. I think we've just about got to finish painting there. Well, looking at it from a distance here, I think I did an okay job. I uh, hope you guys had uh, a good time watching as much as you did. Uh, I might try this again because that cabin is, or that covered bridge looks a little little funny to me but like I said this is my first time doing it as far as I can remember so I think maybe this roof line needs to be a little bit lower maybe that would fix it you know I'm gonna try fixing it right now why not if I come in here I just make this roof line just a little lower a little lower Okay, and then I come in with my grayish color here, which is just black and white. Do I have any of this left? I think I do. And just kind of graze a little bit of that down. Put a little highlight in the front. A little brighter highlight on this side too. There, now let's take a look here. That looks a little better. Maybe just a little bit like this. Figure out a little bit more highlight on the back there to clean up that, that angle. Nice. I think that straightened it out a little bit. Now I feel a little better. I hope you guys had a good time watching this painting again. I think I've already repeated myself here. So, I'll sign this one with a little bit of the, the bright red. Let me know what you think in the comments. And stay tuned for lots more videos and fun stuff and, and new tutorials. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.